this listing has been selective and confined only to the three Abrahamic religions. This august body has once again failed to acknowledge the rise of hatred and violent terrorist attacks against other religions, inter alia, Buddhism, Sikhism, and Hinduism. In order to address the root causes of terrorism, it is imperative for the international community, in particular the UN Security Council, to address situations of prolonged unresolved conflicts, foreign occupation, and denial of the right to self-determination. leading this extremely important process. Madam Chair, Pakistan has been at the forefront of the international fight against terrorism and has rendered innumerable sacrifices in this regard. For more than a decade, Pakistan has suffered the most due to terrorism, including the ones supported and spons sponsored from abroad, suffering thousands of casualties of both civilians and security personnel. The most recent manifestation of this externally supported and financed terrorism is in the form of terrorist attack on the 3rd of June in Lahore. Those responsible for organizing, financing, and supporting such terrorist attacks and many more before them must be held accountable by the international community. Madam Chair, Pakistan welcomes the adoption of the draft resolution A-75-L105 entitled the United Nations Global Counterterrorism Strategy, seventh review by consensus. We express the hope that the adoption of this resolution will help in further strengthening international cooperation to prevent and combat terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. Madam Chair, in order to address the root causes of terrorism, it is imperative for the international community, in particular the UN Security Council, to address situations of prolonged unresolved conflicts foreign occupation, and denial of the right to self-determination. History bears testimony to the undeniable reality that the suppression of the rights of people to self-determination results inevitably in perpetuation of violence and conflict. Aggressors, colonizers, and occupiers often attempt to justify their suppression of legitimate struggle for self-determination and freedom by portraying them as terrorism. The global counter-terrorism strategy was adopted by consensus 15 years ago and was a major step forward in maintaining and achieving the international peace and security. The international community acknowledged that the threat of terrorism is grave and universal and can only be defeated by collective efforts of all UN member states without any exception. It was agreed that terrorism in all its forms and manifestations should be condemned there cannot be any exception or justification for any act of terrorism, regardless of motivations behind such acts, and wherever, whenever, and by whomsoever committed. It was also recognized that the menace of terrorism cannot be and should not be associated with any religion, nationality, civilization, or ethnic group. However, it is essential for all member states to not only not squander the gains of what we have achieved so far, but also ensure that we do not give the slightest opportunity to provide excuses or justification for terrorism, thereby diminishing our collective fight. Justifying terrorism in any way, whether on the grounds of religion, ideology, ethnicity, or race, will only provide the necessary fodder for terrorists to enhance their activities even more. Further, let us not forget that before 9-11 happened, the world was divided into your terrorists or my terrorists. It is only after 9-11 that we accepted that terrorism in one part of the world can directly impact another part of the world, and we all came together to fight terrorism collectively. 20 years later, we are now seeing attempts to divide us once again by adopting new terminologies under the guise of emerging threats, such as racially and ethnically motivated violent extremism, 
violent nationalism, right-wing extremism, etc. I do hope that member states do not forget history and divide terrorism again into different categories and take us back to the era of your terrorists and my terrorists and erase the gains we have had over the last two decades. Madam President, today the misuse of internet and social media for terrorist propaganda, radicalization, and recruitment of CADA, misuse of new payment methods such as blockchain currencies, payment wallets, crowdfunding platforms for financing of terrorism, and misuse of emerging technologies such as drones, 3D printing, artificial intelligence, robotics for terrorist purposes have emerged as the most serious threats of terrorism, which warrants collaborative actions from all member states. While the matter of religious phobias finds mention in the current document, we are once again constrained to point out that this listing has been selective and confined only to the three Abrahamic religions. This august body has once again failed to acknowledge the rise of hatred and violent terrorist attacks against other religions, inter alia, Buddhism, Sikhism, and Hinduism. Further, we need to take, make a distinction between countries which are pluralistic and those which resort to sectarian violence and trample over minority rights. The United Nations is not a body or the forum where member states should take sides on religious phobias, but should instead truly foster a culture based on universal principles of humanity and compassion so that terrorist narratives are fought collectively. The continued absence of a universally agreed definition of terrorism is detrimental to our shared goal of eliminating it. The current strategy fails to resolve the stalemate, preventing the adoption of a comprehensive convention on international terrorism, which India has championed. Madam President, before I conclude, I would like to submit that the success of this strategy will depend only if member states walk the talk by sincerely implementing the provisions and fulfilling their obligations as envisaged in this strategy. As a victim of cross-border terrorism for several decades, my country has been at the forefront of fight against terrorism and one of the major victims of terrorism. However, it is time to call out those that blatantly violate global commitments by harboring terrorists and terrorist entities, including those proscribed by the UN, by willfully giving moral, material, financial, and ideological support to these groups to foment terrorism and disrupt social harmony and peace. The international community needs to adopt a policy of zero tolerance towards terrorism. Our collective condemnation of terrorism must be loud, clear, and without any ambiguity. I thank you.